Well, we have former Republican governor of Puerto Rico joining us now, Luis Fortuño. He served as the governor of the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico from 2009 to 2013. Uh, governor Fortuño, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good morning. Pleasure Good. being with you. Oh, I'm glad you're here. So I want to ask you um, about the politics of the immigration issue. Um, you know, what do you think it means for Republicans uh, going forward? You know, how do we build the Latino vote? I mean, you watched the way that this presidential election went down. You saw the way that Mitt Romney lost big with Hispanics in a way that, you know, George Bush made such inroads and, and Governor Fortunio, they were erased. So how do Republicans build trust with that Latino vote? Is it immigration? Well, actually, it's it's just a lot more than just that, actually. Uh, for the Latino vote, voter, uh, what's important is is uh, education for your kids, how high are your taxes, and, and actually there is a natural distrust of government uh, uh, amongst the uh, Hispanic community. Just to remind everyone, back in 2004, as you were mentioning, um, George W. Bush garnered 44% of the Hispanic vote. Mm-hmm. And actually, uh, uh, President Reagan uh, garnered almost 40 percent, 36 percent back in 1980. So this is very doable. The tenor of the public uh, discourse of any issue, not just immigration, is what's important. And uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful what that— What do you mean by tenor, Governor Fortunio? What the, do you mean by it, tenor? The, the tone of the discussion, uh, the problem we've had with some members of the Republican Party in the past few years is that the tone of the discussion gives the impression that we simply don't want the Hispanics in our party. And that is wrong. On the contrary, actually, Hispanics want a smaller government. They don't want to pay taxes. Actually, one in every ten Hispanics is a small uh, business owner. Uh, they uh, they want to have greater control over um, their kids' education. They uh, actually would favor school choice, and uh, at the same time uh, uh, would favor as well uh, married pay for teachers. But Governor uh, Fortunio, those are all issues that the Republican Party champions. And traditionally, you saw George Bush, um, you, you know, win these voters. I want to ask you why you think that he, what he did in the tone and the policy platforms to that, that worked. Um, but that's what Republicans champion. So why traditionally have we not garnered a majority of the Hispanic vote, particularly Puerto Ricans? Puerto well, Ricans actually, don't vote with Republicans. Actually, they, they did vote. Uh, by majority, by more than 50 percent in uh, 2004 with George W. Bush. So what happened? Because the issues didn't change. Was it Mitt Romney's tone? What did he do wrong to lose that vote? I think it would be uh, in, you know, incorrect to just blame Mitt Romney. I, I am convinced that it has to do with a n- good number of the members of our party that uh, in the past few years have sent the message that we simply don't want the Hispanic voters in our party. And there's nothing further from the truth. But, but again, if the tone of our public uh, discussion on certain issues, not just immigration, gives that impression, how can we uh, actually uh, elicit and actually secure those voters? It, it, it will be very difficult. And what we need to do is show respect for the community. For example, when we're discussing uh, the English language, Nine out of ten Hispanic parents want their children to be fluent in English. Mm-hmm. But it, there's a big difference if you tell them, we want your children to learn English because it's a language of opportunity, as opposed to English only. I don't want to hear you speaking in Spanish not even in your household. There's a big difference between one message and the other. Now, I have to challenge you on one point, though, because you said that there's Republicans that don't want Hispanics in the party. They I can't think impression. of a Republican that doesn't want Hispanics in the Republican Party. I, I think that your, your point is very well taken on the tone and the tenor of how they argue immigration. But I think that there's a lot of conservatives that feel not that they don't want Hispanics in the party. They want them to be in the party legally, and they don't want them rewarded for breaking the law. Now, I have a different take on this as 
as you may know, my father was an immigrant from Greece and he was in the restaurant business and he was very poor when he came to this country. And most of the kitchen was immigrants. It was Hispanic immigrants. So I speak Spanish. I'm incredibly sympathetic to this issue. And I do not believe in this self-deportation stuff or ship them all home. But I do see the argument from the conservative side as a conservative that they did break the law and there, there is a there, there is a risk with just giving amnesty to 11 million citizens. What do you think? I, I could not agree with you more. Uh, but, again, uh, we have to uh, divide the Hispanic community in, in different groups. There are over 50 million Hispanics in America, and 11 million are illegal. What groups so would means, you divide them in? So, so for example, groups? if you're talking about Puerto Rican Americans, there are almost you know, four and a half, five million Puerto Rican Americans in the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, Puerto Rican Americans are natural-born American citizens. Most, I'm sure, most people don't know that, but that's just the way it is. Uh, secondly, there are many second and third generation uh, Hispanics that are American citizens. They're proud to be part of this our, our national fabric. They contribute to our society, pay taxes, are God-fearing citizens, law-abiding citizens. Uh, why should they be uh, actually thrown into the same group as those that broke the law? And then thirdly, there are yo- those youngsters that were brought in and not out of their own volition into the country, but their parents or uh, family members, what have you, many years ago. They're just trying to uh, actually uh, get an education, perhaps at times even serve in the military. Uh, They're here illegally, but it was not their fault to be here illegally. Well, there should be a way for us to recognize that there are different groups uh, of Hispanics and that um, some of them are American citizens already uh, or are natural-born citizens. Others came here and have become American citizens, and they're contributing to our nation. And thirdly, there are others that were brought in, uh, and not necessarily because they, they decided to uh, come in, but they have made their lives here. They're studying here, working here. Uh, we should have a way to recognize that as well. Mm-hmm. I uh, there's a report we we did we covered uh, based on an ABC News report about these uh, anchor baby hotels, which has become a big business. Um, they're actually wanting to come in this country so badly that there's a big underground market for getting in a hotel in California, giving birth, so that your baby's a citizen. We've got to deal with that kind of stuff um, a- as well because. We, just, we can't have people running over the borders and just giving birth here to become citizens. So many issues. But very quickly, Governor Fortunio, do you think that Marco Rubio, very quickly, can repair the tone and the tenor damage that you say the Republican Party has had? Well, Senator Rubio is making a tremendous contribution to uh, uh, you know, assist the party in doing just that. However, it's up to all of us to do that. And again, that... that, that the tenor, the tone of our discussion of this and many other issues will be key during the next four years to secure a much larger percentage of the Hispanic votes when 2016 comes around. I hope so, Governor Fortunio, because the issues line up with the Republican Party. So I hope that it's a natural fit. I'm not sure why we lost them, because there was a lot of them, a lot of senators like McCain and others that were welcoming. So I hope we can, uh, I hope we can... Figure out a solution. But thank you so much, Governor Fortunio, for coming on the show. You can follow him on Twitter, at LuisFortunio51. He's the former governor of Puerto Rico. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you.